What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. We are so excited to be finally talking about the film that everybody has anticipated for a year, and it finally dropped, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and I got to do a review of a man, Phenom202. What's going on, brother? Phenom202, DDA representative, all day, every day, and twice on Sundays. <laughs> Yo, man, I've been waiting to talk to you about this, man. Yeah, same here, man. I saw it over the weekend and I know you saw it over the weekend, too. So we've been like, look, let's just go ahead and, and, and crack that shell and get into our thoughts. So before I get into my thoughts, I want to pass it off to you, man. Let me know right out the gate. Did you like this film? Trash. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, back, now back to you, Corey. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> That's how it's going to be. Like it's trash, you know. No, go ahead. The, the aesthetics look great. Like as far as the yeah. colors and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, I just have so many issues with the plot. Mm. You know, you're not the only one that has said that. Uh, there's been a lot of people, Rotten Tomatoes, the critics and audience. Mm. They're they're having the same gripes. Like it looks beautiful, but people have issues with the story. I for one. I was okay. I for one was okay with it. I mean, after you see things like Infinity War mm -hmm. and Endgame, mm -hmm. it's hard, man, to 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 get back to that level. So when you get a good movie, it's almost like wah wah wah. But when I just peel it back, and I'm like, it's a good movie. It's it's a solid movie for me. It's not great. It's not bad. It falls a little bit than average for me, and that's just kind of where I felt. I did have some issues though. I did have some issues though. So let's yes. get into to some of the things that you really so, was not feeling. I, I, first of all, if you're not a comic book reader, they got a whole civilization that just got introduced. Yeah, yeah, in the uh, the quantum realm. In the quantum realm. Yeah, yeah. My my issue was Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> did not disclose that information to her family. Mm. She just kept saying, "No, nah, don't Facts. mess with the quantum realm." Mm -hmm. that was something we would need to know yo yeah and especially somebody like Kang I did wonder that too like she just kept telling them you know you don't want to go down to the quantum realm and she barely even said that until it was yeah. like right there at the moment but she was never disclosing the reasoning why that there was a civilization down there that mm -hmm. there are people down there that she used to be a freedom fighter and they're this evil badass dude Yep. that can destroy the galaxies named Kang. And that's the reason why she don't want it. She never disclosed that. And I was never. always wondering, like, why? Why would she withhold that information? And uh, That's a big effing point. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely, I think, some of the people's gripes with, like, the writing. Like, some things just didn't line up, you know. But, you know, I thought Michelle Pfeiffer did great in the film. I was actually surprised that she was in it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, she was. it was, my, my sentiments exactly. I didn't think she looking at the previews and stuff or just mm -hmm. about the script. Yeah. I didn't think she would have a big role in it. Yeah. She was in it quite a bit, man. She was in it. A lot. Her story was the big part of it. Yeah. It was a um, big part, but it's, it's I me. Mean, all right. Minus that. All right. So we already got into that. It wasn't that great. <laughs> what did you right. think about Paul Rudd? Oh, he, he's, he's great. Yeah. 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 That, that's what I thought too. Yeah. 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 I mean, he, he never takes away, but you know we always talk about yo. I always say, I hate teenagers, yo. Oh, so uh, Cassie. <laughs> I mean, first of all, she's a freedom fighter herself, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. she's arrogant as hell. Yeah, using yeah. the suit. Daddy said she didn't know she had a suit. So they're going behind her. They they didn't even she. Uh, hold up, Paul Rudd didn't know. Ant Man didn't know she had a suit already. Yeah, yeah, true. True. You know and saying? and the, um supposedly Michelle Pfeiffer, Hope, and uh Michael Douglas was all Pink. in on it, except yeah. Paul Rudd. You know, it, he he had no clue that they was helping enabling this of her wanting to get the suit, doing all this quantum physics because she wanted to go to the quantum realm. Like he had no clue of any of this was going on because she initially gets introduced. She's in jail. She's got kind of this rebellious streak. And, and, and but but it's it's rebellious, but it's more of like she's trying to fight for the she's trying to fight the good yeah. fight for the little guy. Cause that's they say that a lot, you know, fight for the little guy. Yeah. And so 
you know, she gets introduced. Um, you know, some people didn't like her character. You clearly one of them. Uh, I didn't mind her character that much. I think the issue with her is not her. I think the writing, we didn't get enough time with her to really like her. We get introduced to her very quickly and literally not even 10 minutes into the film, we're in the quantum realm. Yeah. Like, just like that. And so, she, she's 18 already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to do some quick math and some quick deductions, or some statistics, to figure <laughs> out how the hell she's 18. But she she was in the blip. She was in the blip. Yeah. So Paul Rudd got blipped that five year time frame. And well, OK, when Paul Rudd got blipped that five year time frame, she came back. She was older, clearly. Mm -hmm. But then there has been some time that has passed since Endgame. And yeah. that's what she's frustrated about that this time has been going on and and she is uh she's upset with him because he's chilling you know he's going to starbucks getting coffee mochas and, and all this stuff and i like that intro though i thought paul rudd was fine i love paul yeah. rudd i love all the actors actually and um i love the way the quantum realm looked i thought it looked fantastic me it, personally it, it I, I thought it looked i thought it looked great what do you beautiful. think about um, what do you think about Bill Murray uh, showing up in the film? Bill Murray's Bill Murray. He's a, he's <laughs> like that in every film. You know what I'm saying? It was so I would so when she gets to the quantum realm. Yeah, I thought we was in effing Star Wars, yo. Mm. Hey, it was basically the, the bar of Star Wars, yo. You know what I'm saying? The bar scene. Oh with, yes, yeah, with, the bar scene. With, with people right. from different places, like, yeah. and that's that's the thing. Like, this is something that just got thrown at us, like. If you like mm -hmm. I said, if you never read, read the comics, yeah. didn't know about the quantum realm, but you've been watching Marvel movies from phase one to now. Yeah. Yeah. Then he she wasn't even like, you know, there's people down there. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> there's a whole civilization. Good point. I Good mean, point. none of that. And so, you know, Bill Murray is Bill Murray. I mean, <laughs> then we start to figure out they were they were an team. item. Yeah. They were an item. Yeah. So he was, he was, you know, they was, you know, doing the grown up. Yeah, yeah, and Michael I, Douglas I was part. cool with it. He's like, oh, it was thirty years. I thought you was gone. You know, I, yeah. and she thought, hey, I thought I was never coming back. So yeah, um, <laughs> but then you know, everybody was out for. Her. Well, Kang was super out for, her. and that yeah. would have been information <clears throat> that she should have shared with her family. And she she definitely should have shared that. I did love the flashback to understand. You know, just the dynamic of, of why Kang is after so bad, why even Bill Murray was willing to give her up because he's like, you left us with him. Mm -hmm. Like, you knew this guy was who he was and you left us with him. And I'm like, I don't understand. But then, of course, you know, they do the flashback. You understand that he got exiled there and they didn't really explain why at that moment. They or just, who? or who it was. You don't really find out to the end that it was the other Kangs that exiled him there. And mm -hmm. so that was a little bit like who exiled him there. But this whole time, you know, he's he's playing with her, like I gotta get my machine fixed to get back to where I gotta go and blah, blah, blah. But really he's trying to get back to seek revenge on the people that exiled her so he can win. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually she finds out about now. Now how touching that thing makes her see all that, I don't know. I don't Maybe know that's how all his memories was trapped in there. So I, I, can, I can excuse that part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, she touches the orb or whatever it was that held mm -hmm. his thoughts and his his uh, his actions. Yeah. And he looked at it like, yo, it is what it is, yo. <laughs> he did. He, he was like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, like, I loved how he was, man. Let, so let's get with that, man, and, and talk yeah. about Jonathan Majors as Kang. How did you feel he was as an actor? And do you think Kang was misused because a lot of people have been feeling that they think he was misused in this film. Like he should have been used in another film exactly. instead of this Ant-Man film. What, what yeah. are your thoughts on that? I think Jonathan Majors is was too big for this film. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't blame Marvel for it because who knew this, he was going to be a, a great actor like this? Because yeah. he's had a, a meteoric rise. Yeah, he has. You know, during the filming of this. Yeah. Like Lovecraft Country put mm -hmm. him on the map. Mm -hmm. and he's been in a lot of different stuff like uh Last black man in san francisco yes phenomenal movie mm -hmm. so his ascension was already in the works yeah yeah i mean they definitely knew they had a superstar on the rise because they got him early yeah. and yeah. and he's 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 great he's, he's phenomenal i think he's killing this character as king i mean all the different dimensions of him you know the fact that i i was fearful of him because he has that um that type of attitude that 
you are beneath me, but I, I plan with you right now, but don't you dare like step my way because I will finish you in a minute. And I love that, yo. I love yeah. that because he's he's calm. He's not the mustache twirling villain, but he's mm-hmm. real calm, cool and collected because even when he was threatening Scott with like how he was going to kill his daughter and put him in a time loop where he had to watch it over and over again. And he was like, and don't think I won't do it. Yeah, and I sinister, believe them. Mm-hmm. Sinister, <laughs> yo. Um, and that's the thing, like w- with Jonathan Majors, he, he definitely stood out in the movie. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I liked him and Scott, Scott's dynamic going back mm-hmm. and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, the I was okay with the plot after that. I mean, like war, you know, fighting and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you think about the peripheral characters? Like the dude that have no holes or the, uh, the buildings that moved or, uh, the, uh, the, the, the warrior lady that was. With yeah. The I still don't even know her name. I mean, I yeah. thought she looked great. I, but I don't know her name, but my, and I, and I loved the world. I love yeah. the world of it. I think, um, I can understand people's gripes when they're saying we didn't get enough time to spend with these characters. So we don't understand why we have to fight for them. Like, what yeah. is it really that we're fighting for them? <clears throat> but um, I, I I like the guy with the holes because sometimes you need some comic relief. Me personally, relief, I like yeah. the guy with the holes. So sometimes you need that comic relief to kind of just let some levity go along with the seriousness. I was cool with it. You know, when they were drinking the ooze, you yeah. couldn't understand what word they were saying. And then all of a sudden you... You can hear what they're saying. It's like, okay, you drank me. We're all good now. You know, yeah. I thought that was funny. So I like, I like that. I just, I just thought we probably needed more time with them mm-hmm. to really understand why we we are here to help them. But that was that was just, I think, probably because it just had so much in the movie. When you really yeah. think about it, you have Scott Lang, you have Hope, you have Cassie, you got Mike Douglas, you got um Michelle Pfeiffer. And you got Jonathan Mage. That's a, that's a yeah. lot of people. Then yeah. you got to introduce these side characters. So people are getting lost in the shuffle. So I could understand why people was like, yeah, it was a, it was maybe a little a little too much. I think personally, Jonathan Mage did a great job. Um, I loved him as Kang. I yeah. do think, I do think that maybe just maybe he was a, he could have had another villain for Ant Man to go against other than Kang. Because yeah. I feel like if this is supposed to be Kang, I didn't like the fact that Ant Man was able to kill him off at the end. Because I'm like Ant Man. Yeah, no, Kang. Yeah, yeah. I, that was that was probably my. I don't mind him defeating Kang, but he kind of killed him off. I, I was yeah. thinking he was going to defeat Kang, sort of like the way Michelle Pfeiffer did, like stop his plan. And then that, yeah. that's what I thought. Now yeah. I would have been fine with that, but he literally like defeated him, kind of killed him, up. him off. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, he got I me. Mean, he he kind of got jumped though, because the was came back in. The, the was came back. Yeah, true. The was came back. And so see, me, I, I would have liked it if it ended like that. Like he got stuck there because he stopped Kang from you know, like because when he makes that that famous line, "I don't have to win, you just have you to lose." That's what I thought was going to happen. Me too. Yeah. Me too. But go ahead. What, what were you going to say? So. Speaking of side characters, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to it, man. Because, like you said, mm. a villain that <clears throat> Ant-Man should have faced. Mm. Kang is too big of a supervillain for Ant-Man. Yeah. But it did introduce Moda. <sighs> this is... <laughs> this is my one major issue in this film. All of the visual effects are so... Damn good. Yeah. Why does Modoc look like he looks bad? He looks yeah. bad. Yeah, it looks I, fake. Like oh. fake, the CGI was like horrible. CGI was bad. It was almost looked like they stretched his face to try to fit an aspect ratio that wasn't right because it yep. looked blurry. It looked, it just did not look right at all. But everything else looked great around him. I would have rather Modoc just kept the helmet on, just kept the face on. Because yeah. the moment he took that face off, it was like, yeah, it was weird. You know, and the thing about it is, like, we I both watched it. we both watched the Mordok cartoon, which is a plus yes. on Hulu. Go check it out; it's yep. fantastic. Patton Oswalt kills it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just—he was a throwaway character in the Marvel universe. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, they threw him away. I mean, like, he was a very sinister part- character in the comics. Mm-hmm. Um. And he didn't, he wasn't a sucker like they made him out, like a bumbling idiot. No, 
He was a genius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just threw him away. They didn't need Modoc in this film. And if you were going to put Modoc in this film, then why kill him off? Like, that's what I didn't understand. Like, I do like parts of Modoc, like at the end when he's kind of cracking them jokes and like, yeah, yeah. when she's like, don't be a dick. He was like, yeah, I won't be a dick. You know, I mean, yeah. I, that part I thought was funny. But if you're going to introduce Modoc, don't kill him off. No. And they literally killed him off in the same film. So then my mind just goes back like, well, why do we have him in this film anyway? Yeah. Just so that Jonathan Majors could just show how strong he is and damn near death choke him or something, you know, like. So I'm going to ask you a question. We've been watching Marvel movies since the inception. Yeah. How many actors have played multiple roles in Marvel? Uh, um, <clears throat> Cause this dude cause... hit the jackpot twice. Cause he was yellow jacket. Yeah, and, and then he hit Modoc. Um, and I, I do like how they brought him back though, because he did get crushed and went into the quantum realm. Supposedly they fixed him up into this killing machine. Um, so I like the fact that they brought him back. Uh, I just they just the writing was just bad, the effects yeah. were just really bad. And if you're gonna be Modoc, then be Modoc. Yeah. But commit, you know, like yeah. that's what they had to do. If, if you're gonna have Modoc be the funny, then let him be that. You know, but I don't know. But the only person I know that has been done at Marvel twice, and I don't even know if I can really say this is Marvel, but Chris Evans, he was the Human Torch and he was Captain America. But that was Fox when he was the Human Torch. So, yeah. you know, I yeah. don't know. But I mean, but that's, that's as you can see, that's why I did like the movie, man. I mean, like, yeah. it wasn't, and I, when I say I, I wanted to be entertained, I think all the Marvel movies generally entertain me except, uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. That, that, that wasn't entertaining at all. Um, and this was in that ru- in that realm, in my opinion. Ooh. It you was, know. It doesn't have rewatchability. I've watched both mm. Ant-Man's multiple times. Oh, man. Um, I am going to, because, look, the reviews on this right now are, I hate to say it, but, dag, I mean, I don't, I'm not in this bunch. But the reviews on right now on Rotten Tomatoes is it's tied for the worst uh, Marvel movie right now. It's uh, uh I'm kind of shocked. I'm really shocked that it's it, it, but you know. But it ha- but they needed more more Scott Lang like like mm. you said at the beginning when he was doing his book tour or he was mm. being a regular person and dude yeah. thought he was Spider Man instead of Ant Man and gave him free stuff mm. and then he took away the free stuff he said oh no you're the bug guy yeah twelve dollars yo yeah he told me twelve dollars he was like yo. really <laughs> you know who they else they needed and I wish they had him in there even if it was for five minutes they're missing Michael Pena that's yeah. what we needed yo we needed Michael Pena man yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree, man. I mean, look, I, I will say I was a little harsh on. I said two earlier, like mm-hmm. when we talked offline. Yeah, I'm gonna go to a, a two point five, yo. Oh come on! <laughs> I thought you was at least gonna go to a four or five. Two point five, yo. Two point five. It was All just right. missing. It was just missing too much, too many elements, man. Like I said, it it it, it doesn't have rewatch factor. Uh, rewatch mm. factor in my eyes. Mm. Okay. I mean, look, I, I can't argue your point because there's a lot of people that feel that way. I mean, I'm looking at Rotten Tomatoes right now. It's 48% on Rotten Tomatoes. It's a splat tying uh, uh, Eternals. So the what, Eternals, about, what about the audience? What are the, what's the audience rating? Interestingly, the audience score is opposite. The audience score is 84%. So generally, people in the audience are scoring it uh, six and up. Uh, but there are some you know, there are some pretty low ones out there, mm-hmm. like, you know, yourself, but the audience score right now is at 84, which is crazy because this audience score it seems to be higher than Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, looking at it here. Yeah, so um, Thor Love and Thunder's audience score is at a 77%. And I, me personally, I think this is better than Thor Love and Thunder. I think so. Because yeah. I can at least watch this. Thor Love and Thunder, for me, I can I enjoy Thor, Thor Love and Thunder, but it, it got to be a Saturday Night Live skit. And after a while, it's like, okay, I, yeah, who I don't can, understand. Uh, who can uh, 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 one-up everybody on the joke? Yeah, on the next line. Instead of being, having like a seriousness. Yeah. I mean, Thor, he started off as a serious character, like mm-hmm. from, the, from the beginning. Yeah. He was serious. Mm-hmm. And now he's fucking Chris Farley. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah. They need to find the balance, and I think the perfect balance was 
Ragnarok. Yeah. Ragnarok was the perfect balance of what we needed. I think they gave took the reins off Taika Watiki a little, little too much on Thor Love and Thunder, and we, we yeah. got what we got. Um, but back to Ant-Man the Wasp, I think Ant-Man is great. Um, I I do think that um uh, Kang was a little bit a little bit misused in this film. And the reason why I say it is because you get to see how powerful he is. Yes. You get to see how strong he is when he's just throwing Modoc up against the wall, when he's just, I mean, he's got technology on him, but it's almost like it's magic how he's using it. Yeah. But then at the very end, you see him like succumb to fucking ants, you know, and I'm like, where the ants is, come from, dog? Where the well, ants come from? Okay, so the ants supposedly it's like, now this is the parts of the quantum realm that I don't understand, but clearly there's stuff that you just you don't understand because it's the quantum realm. The ants went into another realm in the quantum realm that they lived like five thousand years and they had developed all this technology and shit. Okay. So they were they were looking for I, I know, I know. So they were looking for mike douglas this whole time when they found out he came so i i don't know i don't know how they have certain parts people stay in there for a long period of time and then some people just age regular years i i don't know i don't know because even scott lang said that one time before he said yo i was only in there for you know five minutes and i come out and it's been five years you know yeah. so I, I don't know how that works out but either way let's get to the end credit scene so they had two end credit scenes we're going to wrap this up really quick two end credit scenes the first edit credit scene you see a whole bunch of kangs so it's the uh the the the, the council of council kangs, kangs so be it they talk about the exile I mean, if you haven't watched or read any comics, this could be a very confusing scene. But basically now we're seeing a whole bunch of Kane that to bring it all together to help fight what they possibly think is going to be the doom of them. Because now one person has taken down one of their own. So they're like, OK, we got to get everybody up to fight this. Any thoughts on this last scene? I, I kind of was like, OK, that's cool. But I didn't think much of it. No, it was cool seeing it. I, I did have a couple questions. Yeah. And that a comment. Mm -hmm. A, how did everybody get together? Yo? They just basically support everybody from different timelines that, yo. Send an email out, say, "Hey, let's be here. <laughs> I don't, I, you know what I'm saying?" It's just right, that, right. and that's a part I'm like they just throwing it together. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> and then how y'all gonna get mad at a can getting murked when you exiled him? You exiled him. Yeah, you kicked him yeah. out, but now y'all mad. One of y'all died, or are you saying, "I mean, yeah, he died. That means we're vulnerable. That we need yes. to protect ourselves." That's what it really is. Because from my understanding, this king, the king, the conqueror, is really the shit. He's the Kang of all the mm. Kangs, but they didn't like what he was doing, so they exiled them. So the fact that they took down that guy, they're like, oh, shit. You know, like, we got to be a little worried about these guys. So let's get everybody together, put our heads together, and figure out how we can stop what could possibly be coming into other uh, multiverses. So that, I think that's so, what that's all about. To piggyback off what you said, did this Kang come from Loki's timeline or from a completely different timeline? They we that, don't know. that not, do not know. I do not know. That's the thing with Kang. You could have a Kang from so many different timelines. And the interesting thing is he jumps in and out of other people's timelines. So you could have two Kangs in one timeline, but he won't stay there long. He'll just, you know, that's how this person was. He was jumping in and out, destroying, you know, universes. And mm -hmm. the, but the, my only gripe with this is I want to get invested in Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. I don't want them to keep killing off Kangs after every single, I'm not going to like that. I think if they do that, that's just going to mess, mess up us really getting on the journey of the villain. So I hope they don't do that. So I agree. Um, now we got another end credit scene with Loki. I, this is basically the introduction of season two, but then you see um, Jonathan Majors come up as Victor Timely and he's, you know, all of a sudden Loki sees him is like, oh shit, that's him. That's who it is. A man, Owen Wilson, like, look, he doesn't look like much of anything, but you know, Loki's like he is this, this guy is scary. Um, yeah. I'm excited about that because I was a big fan of Loki season two. Yeah. Um, your thoughts on the uh, end credit scene here? I mean, anytime I see Loki on screen, cause Loki, is the best of them, yeah. Out of the all the Marvel shows that came out, um, yeah. in my opinion, I've uh, got to see Mobius. Yeah, Mobius. 
Okay. Get him back, man. Got it. Yeah. Got to give him his moped, yo. Get him his yeah. ski, jet ski. His jet ski, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just want to see where it's going to go behind it. I want to know, A, I don't want to go into Loki season two and don't know how Loki got there to see Victor Timely. Yeah, true How that. do you get in that audience? How do you track him down? I need to know that. You just can't throw that at me and just leave it. Mm-hmm. I need to see how that happened. Yeah, I get it. Connect the dots with the Easter egg. You know, it, it just don't throw that out there as a post credit scene. And we're like, huh, what's going on? So um, hopefully we'll get to see that. I do think that there could be a possible tease of Dr. Doom. Like I told you before, offline, Phoenix, uh, the... Victor Tomley has a connection to Dr. Doom in the comics, so we could get introduced to Dr. Doom a lot sooner than we thought, which is pretty exciting because Doom is a fantastic villain oh, for facts. the Fantastic Four and so many other uh, superheroes that it's I would love to see Dr. Doom um, take the screen, but yeah. All right, man. So I'm going to wrap it up. I give this movie, I initially gave it a seven. Um, As I've been going on, it's a 6.5. I don't go much lower than that, but it's a 6.5 for me. Fina's giving it a 2.5. So there we go. Strong, strong. Look, I can't even make boy with this show. You get two. I got two books, yo. That's what he gave me. Damn, two books. Two and a half. Two and a half, yo. Two and 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 a half books. Damn, yo, that's terrible. Well, we're pretty much almost like the critics. You know, he likes it. I, you know, follow a little bit better than average. But either way, thank you guys so much for this review of Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Are you excited to see Jonathan Majors? Do you think he died at the end? I don't think so. A lot of people are theorizing that he may not have died, but he went into the quantum of the quantum realm now. Well, I don't know. So we'll find out. But either way, my name is Corey Roy. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. That's Phenom202. And as always, we'll be back at you with another review. Peace. Yep, yep.